Hello and welcome to this new and exciting tutorial in basketball post design. We want to see when a basketball player dunk, how would the rim and the post response to that dynamic force? How would, how, how would it vibrate? And to do so, we'll be doing implicit and then we'll be doing model dynamics analysis and compare the two results. We'll have a touch on a preliminary design consideration in which having done this dynamic analysis, we will where we will handle the, st the stresses that, that were developed due to dynamic load and see how can we use these stresses for static analysis for design consideration. Let's begin. So the objective of this one, let's let's move through it really fast, that we're able to, to model dynamics of problem, to know how to implement and compare implicit and model dynamics, uh, implicit and model dynamics, compare these two methods, uh, how to add the damping effect, and how to simplify complex, relatively complex, complex problem to simple solvable models using simple uh, element types, just like beam element and shell element, and how to couple these different uh, element types. How to post the process and analyze the results. And then having some preliminary, preliminary design concentration based on the stresses that were developed in the dynamic state. This is our problem. And basically we wanna design this basketball post in which when the basketball player dunk, which is resembled by this force here, we wanna see when, a, when we have a force that's applied and then we just remove that force suddenly and let it go. How would that, uh, how would that geometry be? And how, how would the, the structure respond to that dynamic, for, the, the dynamic uh, problem? The, the post here, which is the one on the back, and the backboard, which is this one, are uh, assumed to be welded together and they move together. Uh, I mean, at, at the interface. The, uh, the ring or the, the rim here, this one here is connected to this bracket and it says we are assuming that they're welded together and their degrees of freedom are welded together. And this bracket, oh, sorry. And this bracket here, and we are assuming that it's pinned to the backboard. The materials for all of these are st is a steel. And um, this is the dimension. I mean, th this is the height of the uh, of the uh, of this of this rim or hoop from the ground, which is ten feet or one twenty inches. The way we will be tackling our problem today is has to approach. The first approach is solving the time domain, which is the direct time, uh, direct time integration and doing the implicit analysis, which basically it's, uh, it's done in two steps. First initial step, initial condition, and then we'll do the di dynamics uh, implicit, uh, implicit solver. The second step is using the frequency domain or solving, solving the problem in the frequency domain and which would we call the model analysis. And within that step, basically, or within this approach, basically, we find, we let Abacus find the model analysis or the mode shapes of that, of that structure. And then you, we add initial condition. And the third step, is to let Abacus use the model displacements found using the first model analysis to run model dynamics of problem, taking the effect of the initial condition. The components that we have here, as I, as I said, we have the rim or the hoop here, which is this circular shape where the basketball will go in or where the player will, will dunk. And it has this, this dimension of, it has a radius of 9.25, the section is a, a, sol a solid circular section of 0.5 inches. We have the post here, which, which, is, uh, which has a height of 130 inches. And uh, this, this part here, which, has, which is at 36 inches. 
The post has a hollow, a hollow cross section, which is at 2.5 inches under at the thickness of 0.2 inches. Both of these uh, components will be modeled as a 3D beam element. The, uh, the, the other two components are the, the backboard and the, and the bracket. And the bracket which connects the backboard to the, to the hoop or to, or to the rim, which is this one here, and the dimensions are given here. And here, I want to emphasize one point here, is that this is structure basically is, is just a board on a, on a bracket. But as you can see here, there, there are a lot of details that are added here. And the purpose of these details, which, is, which are these lines here, is to divide the structure or the geometry into very, uh, very specific details or specific points in which I can use these points later to assemble them, to assemble the parts at very specific points. So the, the part, for example, you see here at the bottom here, example, this part that you see here for the, uh, for the bracket in which these four nodes here, this one, this one, this one, and this one should match with this one, this one, this one, and this one. And we, with this, I believe we can, uh, uh, just the last thing that we have the material properties, which is a steel and has these properties. And with this, I believe we, let's, let's just start with Abacus and let's get going. And let's see, okay, here's Abacus. And I will start by, as usual, I'll start by setting my work directory. And, <clears throat> All right, project done. And let's, let's start by renaming my, uh, my model and let's let's call it the I'm and okay now let's create let's let's create our parts for the first part I'll create the post and the post is a 3D uh, beam element which is wire here and has a length of 136 something. So uh, let's, uh, let's, let's keep the 200 here, the size. And we, it's basically a line in which the first point is zero, zero. And last point, so it's one, that's 130. So that's zero, 130 and Y. And uh, let's be here. Oops, here we go. That's that's still fine. So, and the other one is at at height of one thirty, but to the left of th with thirty six inches. So that's x thirty six and y again one thirty. And we'll have um we'll have a fillet to reduce the stress concentration here, and we'll have the radius of the fillet will have it as five inches here. And let's click on this one and on this one. And as you can see now, the, uh, the fillet is created with a radius of five inches. And I'm done now and I can click done. And we created our first model and I forgot to rename it. So oh, I did, I, I, I named it. So now I, let's go and create the other part. So let's create on this, create part. And let's create the rim of oh, the hoop. Not, not sure what to call it anyway. <clears throat> so the, the rim has a, has a radius of 9.25 inches. So let's, let's have here as 15. And it's a circle. So center point as 0, 0. And 9.25, 0. And we, with this, perfect, we're done. Okay, that was simple. And now let's, 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 let's model the bracket 
and then the the backboard. So let's click on this, and let's say this is a bracket. And for the bracket, we model it as shell. And basically, the way we start with this one is I will I will draw these two edges. I will extrude them inside by by the depth of five point seven, and then I will make this cut here. And basically, I have this cut here so that I'm, first this cut has a radius that perfectly match the the radius of the of the rim. So that later when I connect this or connect connect or assemble or create interaction between these two, I'll have perfect match between them between the nodes of these two, and uh, yeah, we need that for the analysis. Yep, let's let's go that bracket and that has a size of that should work shell and extrusion and that's zero zero. And that's zero five point five, and the last point is five point oops five point five and five point five, and again I'll have a, a fillet of radius of radius of point five, and again click just click on this and this and it's created and you can see it here, and. Uh, now done and one extrude with a depth of 5.7 so and now we want to make the cut here and the cut we'll make it on this plane so to make that to make the cut let's go to the left here and you can see here if you just if you toggle this it's say create create cut extrude just to click on this and now it's asked you to, to select the, um, the plane. So we want to cut this plane. And then it asks you to, to select the, uh, an edge that will appear. So I can, you can click any edge and it just affect the, how, how it look like. But you can see if you each, if we select, for example, select horizontal, horizontal bottom. And I believe this one, now it will look. Okay, it looks weird, but anyway, yeah. So, but now th that's th that's our edge that we need to cut, and that's the face that we will be cutting. I mean, it should face that the direction, and we want to make make cut of a part of a circle. If we go to the left here, we can see here we can create a circle using three points. So at, when we the first point we select, it will be the center point of that circle. And we want the center point of that circle to be at the center line, this center line here. So at the beginning, you can make it at any point, but it should be on this center line. So if you didn't do that, then it will be a bit harder later to, to fix it. So and now the second point and third point should touch the two edges. So this edge and this edge now. And now I, I'll go to this one here at dimension, click on this and just choose this one here. And now the radius should match the radius of the rim, which is 9.25 inches. So 9.25. And here, once we once we specify that where that center point should be in what line, and then we constrain two, two points in which it should, should cross and specify the radius, then we completely describe that that part of the circle and it's we can call it fully defined now but the last point here we just need to close this so that we'll be able to cut it so let's do this just to close it by a line and then just to click done and now it's asked you to which uh, which direction that you want to make the cut and make it downward and click okay and then you, you can see that it, it's it's cut now and then we want to We want to make these uh, these these cut these uh, these lines here that divide the, the this geometry or this plane, and this plane is just at the back or the front of this bracket here. So this is the part here, and if you click on this scissor and go to face and go to sketch and click on this one here, and 
click done. And here it's, it asks you to select uh, an edge. And basically I wanna select this edge and I wanna see this, uh, this shape and this, uh, in this shape and, and the way that I'm seeing it right now, rather than rotating it. And the way to do it, just go to vertical, vertical right, yeah, that's the right option. So once I click on this one, it, it will be like this. And now uh, what I need is to divide this, the geometry. So here we have a center line. So we will divide the center line here. And just let me just rotate this one here. Yeah, I, I like it this way better. So it's 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 exactly as what we see here. So we so that's that's our center point. That's quite important to know that where your center point for each uh, for each time you draw something. <clears throat> so let's create this line, and then we want to create this line here. Here, I didn't draw the center line, but the center point is here. And this one here is at uh, 1.25 from the center point. But since my center point uh, in the middle, that would be negative 1.25. So now here, it's uh, and the left point, which is at negative 2.85 and negative 1.25, which is the, the depth in my Ah, oh, it's the other way, but I, I want I want this one as well, so that, that's fine. So that's now 2.85, and that's negative <coughs> uh, negative uh, 1.25. Now let's draw the other one, which is at negative 2.85 at one point. Two five, which is now that one, and now two point eight five, and at one point two five, uh, and I just need to draw these two vertical lines here, and we'll be done. So let's go to line again, and these two at. 1.425 from uh, from the center so that's that's our x coordinate so that's negative 1.425 oops 425 <clears throat> and this point here is at at the middle which is here in this case it, it having to be uh 2.5 so from 2.5 and we want it to be uh, to go all the way to four to five to negative two point five, which is at the top. And now at one point four to five, two point five positive to one point four to five to negative two point five, which is the other end. And with this, I believe we we're done with this one. Done. Perfect. And let's say done. And then let's go to to the to the backboard. So back board. And for the backboard, I'll design that, uh, I will make it as a shell again, 3D shell, but now I'll use a, the planer. And the dimension of the, of the backboard is given here 70 by 40. So planer, and let's have this one as, uh, as 100. And click this one here. And let's start at 0, 0. And then that's 70 and 40 and let's click done and this one needs quite a bit as well so we, we want we we need to divide this the geometry based on these lines and the dimensions are given here so let's start so let's let's go to the scissor sketch click on uh, now it's already selected that plane but it's asking to select the edge i want this edge 
All right, and the center line here, that one. And now I'll have a line in the, in the middle as well. And I have, I'll have this line, which is at, I believe at positive 10. So, yeah, so that would be at from negative, I believe 35 to at positive 10. So that's the first point to positive 35, at 10. And we'll have another line, which is at negative 10. Uh, and last point is 35 at negative 10. So the second line is this line here that you can see here. And now I'll draw a second line, which is this line here, which is at depth of 11.75. So that's again 35 at negative 11.75 to negative 35 to 11, 11.75. Oops. Oh, that, that's, that's a point, not a comma. And now I'll draw this line here, which is at 14.25. So that's negative 35 and then negative 14.25. Oops, again. All right. And I'm good, so that's 35, negative 14, oops, 25. Okay, that's perfect. And now we want to draw these two lines. So again, the purpose of this of this one is to divide, is to divide the structure in a relatively nice way. Probably you can find a better way, but that's the way I did it. And to have these, these four nodes in which Later, I'll use these four nodes to, to, to create uh, interaction between the backboard and, uh, <clears throat> and the bracket. And the circle in the middle ba will basically will be used to create an interaction with the, with the post. So let's make these two lines here. And these two lines are at 1.425 from the, from the center, which resembles just two, two lines here. So let's again, let's, let's draw this. And they start at depth of negative 10. So that's negative 1.425. And that's, they start at negative 10. And 1.425, they go all the way to, to the bottom, which is at negative 20. The first line and the second line is not the positive 1.425, negative 10, 1.425, negative 20. Perfect. And now, what I need, I need the circle now. Okay. And I believe we are almost done. So that's a circle on the center, zero, zero. And it, it should have a radius that's equivalent to the radius of the of the posts. So if you go back and you go to the post, we see that the post have a radius of 2.5 inches. So, so that's uh, <clears throat> 2.5 inches, which is 2.5 zero. That's that's, and they believe by this we're good to go. Perfect. So, okay, that that's a big portion. We so we did we did the backboard with the bracket, we did the post, we did the rim, and let's go to the material property now. Perfect now. So let's go to material property and it's a steel and. The density is 0 0.291. And we, we have the elasticity, we have the elastic constants for the steel, which is given here, which is 30 MSI. So that's 30 
E6, and Poisson's ratio of 0.3. And okay, for the damping, that's that's at the later step. So, and we'll be applying damping only on the model analysis step, not the the implicit one. So now let's let's create the sections. So first one now for the uh, <clears throat> for the uh, for for the backboard. So let's go to create. Let's call it backboard section, and that's okay. Shall homogeneous create, and it has a thickness of. Uh, I believe it's of one thickness of, so that's the thickness of the backboard that's one inches the one inch so okay and let's create all the sections and then we just to save time and so I get section and again that one is the shell and for the bracket again it has a, it has a thickness of one inch so that's that's one. Um, let's uh, so let, let's assign these two sections to move to the rim. So <clears throat> now create section now. Uh, just make sure that you select everything here. Done and choose stats for the backboard. Okay, let's go to the bracket and uh, let's do the same thing, create, and to make sure that you select everything. And just to make sure, yes, we're good. And that's a bracket, and done. And now let's go to the post and I need to create the section here. And since now this one is a beam, so I need to create a section. So I can go right from here and create, or I can go to here, create section, select everything here. Oh, no, not this point. And that's a section assignment. So that's the section manager, create a beam, and let's call it posts section and now choose beam here and beam here and choose this one and now you see you cannot choose anything but if you click on this which is the same as that one you can create here post section section and it's a it's a hollow section so that's that's a pipe so let's create let's choose this one here and now it's asked to go to choose its radius and its thickness. So <clears throat> we will use the thin for the thin wall formulation, and we'll have a for the post. It will have a thickness, a radius of two point five, two point five inch, and the thickness of zero point two. All right, so let's let's click OK. We have it here, and we have a Poisson ratio of 0.3. And done. And let's create a section for the uh, for the rim, right? Since we we're there, so rim section and it's it's not we need to create another one so rim section for this one now this this one is circular it's not a hollow so choose this one now and it has a it has a section of 0.5 inch or radius of 0.5 so choose that one and now we we can see it here so let's choose it and that's Point to three and choose and let's assign on the section. All right, click on this. Let's choose the post. Okay, 
let's move to the rim <clears throat> and choose rim okay and then let's go to before what before we're done since we're doing the uh, the uh, the pipe here for the pipe the pipe needs to, to to have orientation so let's assign orientation here and let's choose this one and since it's it's pipe since it's probably it, it this this direction won't have any effects on and that's and basically if you rotate it you see that oops not now if you click oops let's move this one move it down this one and two direction are basically the same here since we have a circle cross section so and uh, let's click okay and then let's let's go to the to the post and let's do the same thing here let's that is fine And that's two to the direction, and that's just a tangent here. So we're good here. Let's click OK. Done. So we're done with the property. Let's go to this step now. Let assembly create independent, and let's choose all of these now. And that's a lot of work. Click them. So the good thing that is that even though that's that's a lot of work, but we'll do it once, and then when we go to the <clears throat> model analysis, we'll copy these, and we, uh, we we won't need to repeat all these processes. So let's now we created the uh, <clears throat> the the assembly, but we need to move these here to to assemble them. So to do so, let's go to translate. And or even be before translate. So we can see that they're not they're not at the same all at the same orientation. So we need to rotate them. To do so, let's click on this one, rotate. And now it asks you to select instance. So let's me select this instance. And now it asks to select the 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 axis of rotation. So I want to, for example, this one, and I want to rotate it about this axis. So let me choose, for example, this point and this point, and I want to rotate it by 90 degree. And then I click done. And then I want to, for example, select this one here, and I want to select the uh, the backboard and i want to move it to so that its center point here matches this one here so to do so i'll zoom in here and i'll have this point here and now i have this point because i created these uh, segments before i divided that geometry i have these these uh, these points ready to to select so so let me select this point now and then it asks when I selected the first point as to select the the end point. So I have to start with this one first, and then the last point to select the the point that I, that I want to, the translation to be at. So when you click on this, I have the the backboard moved here. And now we <clears throat> I I need to move the this this bracket, but as you can see, I need to rotate it first. So let me click on to this rotate, and let me click on the bracket, and let's click OK. And now it's asked you to select the axis of rotation so that I want to rotate it. So I, I'll use, let me move this one here. So I will use, I'll use this axis here to rotate. So let me see if that would work, that should work. So if I choose this point and this point, and then I want to rotate by 90 degree, 
Oops. Oh, where did it go? So yeah, it's uh, it's related to the right direction. So now we to click OK. And then let me create, let me click on to translate. So if I click on this, all right. So before translate, just I I just for, forgot one, one more point here that I want I want to create a small uh, uh, a reference point here so that that reference point will determine the point that will will go in there. To do so, I can either do it here or on the uh, on the part step. But I prefer to go to do it in the part step since that's more organized. So that's uh, I'll go to here bracket and <clears throat> let me oops okay so i want to create a reference point and to do so i want to click on this here and now it asks you to ask you to select the uh, the coordinates and i want this one to be here at the top here in which this this point here will be will be attached to the uh, <clears throat> well will be face by face with the backboard not really attached but face by face by the backboard and those two the, the, the other nodes uh, will will match with what i have in the backboard so to do so that point now this one is has a depth of uh, this center point is at 2.85 and this this um, this height is at what 5.5 so so again, just make sure that this axis here is Z, which means that that depth here, you should enter in the Z direction here on the Z coordinate. So that's 2.85. And the Y here is 5.5. So that's 5.5. And I think we will get, okay, perfect. And now you, you can see this is small, this, this small point, which is the reference point which I want here. So let's let's go back to our assembly now. And you can see here, this, this, this is the point I created. <clears throat> and let's translate it now. Okay, select this one. And now it's asking to select a point to, to translate. So let me zoom in here, and they want to select this point. And oops, let's go here. And let's Let's zoom in. And now it asked me to select the end point. So I selected the first point, and now it asked me to select the, the end point. And the way I designed it, and, and, and I divide that structure with that reference point should match this one here. So and once I do that, now these two, these nodes at here and here will match what I what I whatever I have on. On the on the bracket so let's let's just click on this and you can see now now this one here and it might matches perfectly with what i have so that's perfect and we are almost done almost and now we we, we want we have this bracket and we want to rotate it so let's rotate it so let's uh let's click on this and uh, now I want to rotate it, with, not with respect to y axis, because that would not with respect to the y axis, but rather with respect to, I believe, with respect to the to the x axis. Let's see if that would work. So let's click on this, and I want to see an, an axis that matches the x axis, which I believe it's this one here. And they want to rotate it by 90 degree. And let's hope that would work. And just to re-zoom, just click on auto fit. And perfect. Now it's 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 based, it's it's right to what I what I want here. And one more point that I forgot, but it's no big deal. We can we can redo it now. So let's go to part. Let's go to the rim. If I go to my slides, you can see here in the slides that even the rim, I, I divided it. So, so that here I'll have, I created a, a datum here and then I cut it so that I'll have a point here and a point here and a point in the middle 
so that these points actually I, I calculated it so that it matches exactly with the with what they have on the bracket. So let's do it now. So it should be fine, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be hard. So let's let's do this. And let's uh, create the uh, reference plane here, and that should be according YZ. So that's YZ, and it should go to 8.8. .8. So that's 8.8. .8. And if you click on this one, that would help you to, to change the perspective. And you can now see that. And uh, to divide, let's go to this one here and click into, let's close this one. Click on this. Oh, it's, it's down there. And now, this one here is not a plane, it's an edge. So that's important because if you try to divide it as a face, you wouldn't be able to do it. So let's go to edge here. And I wanna cut it using datum plane. So let's click on this one. And now it's, it's asked to select a datum plane. If you have one edge or one face, it will select it right away and it will ask you to select a plane or axis to cut. So that's how it acts. So now I cut it and I have, I have these two nodes here. So let's go back to assembly and want to translate. So let's select this this uh, this one here. Oops, I need to rotate that one now. See, see I, I uh, now it need to be rotated around the y axis. That that's fine. So let's let's click on this. And you want to rotate it now. By the y. So the reason I'm rotating is because this, if you, if I zoom in, these are the point that I I want to use, and it's uh, it's it's not uh, on the on the right axis. See, it's it's not that smart, and it's, but uh, I hope that at the end we will end up with something useful. Let's see. By let's rotate it by. Let's hope that I this is the right step I'm not sure if i read it by the positive or the negative so let's let's see and translate this one okay perfect yeah so now let's zoom in and you want to select this one here this point and that's the starting point and the last point, let's zoom in here. And if you go to the edge here and select it, and select it as an end point here, you can see that I have, actually I have a perfect match now. So I have the main geometry. All right. Once I, I do this, it's a good practice at this point here just to save it. Just in case something bad happened, I have it here. So let me call it post design dynamic okay. um, again, having assembled this, it just to advocacy, it's it's kind of meaningless. We need to make interaction between between these these parts so that they they're connected actually together. Now they're connected visually. It's to us meaningful, but to Abacus it's meaningless. So let's let's go to interaction now, and then we'll go back to step. Within the interaction, we want to 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 assemble these parts and make interaction between them. We need we want to couple them. It's uh, <clears throat> it might be a good idea at this point to create nodes so that we 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 then just call these nodes to assemble them. So let's let's do that. And uh, to be to be e easier to do it, I'll just hide some of them and we'll start to create new nodes here. Let me go to instance. Right, let's let's create this one here and 
<clears throat> and let's let's take this one as well for now. And let's let's hide this face as well. Let's me zoom in now and okay for now let's click OK and let's go to tools set go to manager here and let's start to create nodes here. So I'll call it bracket. Top, I, I don't have really good name, so I'll use top left here and um, which is for this one here and click enter. And then hmm, I'll go bracket top right. Become this. And let me just select this one here and create bracket column left and we'll select this one and then bracket column right and let's select this node here. So again, since what we have is a shell, actually the node here, it doesn't matter whether it's, this node is the same as the node on the back and the same as the node on the, on the front. So that's, that's quite important to note. So, <clears throat> and since I'm here, it's, let's, let's again, let's, let's also, let's say post end. And uh, let's, let's call it top end. And let's select this point here. Okay, that's good. Let's let's switch now. Let's click on this. And let's let's see if we, if we can select these. Let me hide this that face again because that's. All right, so now backboards, back, let's call it BB backboards, top left, and now it's it's this one here. So I click enter and backboard top right, and let's select now this one here and backboard bottom left and select this one enter and backboard bottom right and select this one and let's let's select the the edges here for the for uh, for the uh, rim rim left edge uh, let's select this one here and rim center edge and select this one and let's rim not center right edge. So selecting these kind of help then later connecting these nodes without uh, have, having issues with the uh, hiding hiding geometries. So that's that, that's why I'm doing it this way. And <clears throat> and you want to create the. Uh, uh, select this surface to resemble then later to to join it with the with the post but for that one that's a surface so let me go to tools again surface I go to manager and create and let me call it backboard post 
it's the surface in which they interact. So let me choose now this one. And let's click down. And now for, for this one, you can see this one matters, the direction matter. For the points, it's it's it was exactly the same. But now for this one, what's what's in the front is not the same as what's on the back. So for this one, it should con connect with the with the post from the back. So I want the back direction, so it's not the brown, but rather the, the purple, which is on the other direction. So let me choose the purple. So I want I want that surface. Um, <clears throat> let's and now I just want to to select the the this three here and we'll be done. It's almost done from the this section. So let's create now and let's call it bracket. Hmm. Left. I'll call it curve, which is this one here. And it's better to, to, to have a point on the center. And you can see, you can see I haven't divided this one. So if I if I go to Okay, can do it really fast. So we can go to parts and go to brackets, go to the top here, just select this one, face, sketch, and just select whatever face and select this line and like this. Done. Let's go back now to the, the assembly. Okay, some part, okay. So, so it just says that some of the part may have changed here now, but now we can, let's, let's hide some, let's hide this one. Oops, that's, so, okay. Let's do this one and done. So it's it's very if you, if if you can do it if you can start with that one earlier or otherwise if you were following with me just do this one. So let's uh, create and that's a bracket center curve and choose this point now. Now, bracket, right, curve. zoom in just to make sure that you select the right one, which is this one. And we, okay, so to make sure that what you, what you, that you selected the right point, it's, it's useful to, if you go here to the left and you go to assembly, and within assembly, you can see sets here. So if you if you open that one and you start to move, you can see here. And let me just zoom in a bit. So so that's for the rim. Rim is not there, but if we go to that's the post top end, and if we go to the brackets, so that's the the, the points that we select in the brackets. So that's that's important here. So. And I just want to make sure that the bracket, that the points I selected for the curve here. Okay, we're good. And hmm. now let's create interaction. So that's that's why we are, we are we are doing all this all of this. So interaction, and on the interaction we want to create coupling here. To, to create coupling, let's go to this one here, create constraint and create. And we want to first, let's, uh, we want to couple the, this, uh, this bracket to the rim. So let's say bracket 
rim left curve and choose coupling. Now we can use these sets here. So, so now from the sets, we want to select the left point and we you can highlight this one. So that whatever you choose, you know what, you, what you're choosing. So when you use the bracket left here, so that's bracket, uh, bracket curve, bracket, this one here, this point, and select, and then we select node here, and we want to select the rim left edge, to this one here. And if you want to see it, you can just click on this, and now you see it here. And that's what we want to select, and OK. And here for this one, now it's asks you about what, what do you want to do. So we want to do kinematic coupling. And what we want to couple, basically, we want to couple for this one, we're assuming that they're welded at this inter at this phase, which means that we couple all degrees of freedom here at this point. So click OK. And then let's, uh, let's create another one. And it's coded again, bracket, rim, and now this one, center, curve, and coupling. And we will start with the bracket center curve, which is this one here. And then node, and we want the, the rim center point, which is this one here. And click OK. And same thing here. And again, for the right one. Right. Curve. And now bracket right, click node. And now I want to select the rim uh, right edge to this one here. And all right. And now I want to I want to couple the post with that area. And to do so, let's go to create and let's call it backboard post. Okay, that the backboard post. We can say couple. And let's select the point that for, for the post. So post top end, which is this one here, select. And I want to select surface now. So if we select surface, that, that's the surface that we, we, we created before. And now it's again, we, we, we couple all degrees of freedom here. So we click here. And when you when you select it and you make that reaction, you can see here's something. Yeah, it starts to show you something that does kind does um, that there's something that created here, and here there is something. But since that rim is, is is hidden, you cannot see it. So if you click on this, you you'll be now to see to see to see this here as well. But now we want to we want to do one more thing. We want now with the bracket. We want to to connect it to the. Uh, <clears throat> to the backboard using pin. So we are assuming that they're connecting using pole, using uh, uh, using a bolt, and that bolt just acts just like a pin here. So the way to do it is again using coupling. But now, rather than using the coupling, we'll use MPC. So that multiple point uh, connections constraint. So <clears throat> so. Let's let's call it here, and we want to we want to we want a couple of four, the four, the four points. So let's call it uh, backboard brackets top left. Oh no, not couple. So in this one MPC constraint. And here it asks you to select the first control point. So let's go to sets here. We already created the points. 
and let's select the a bracket a bracket top left so that's a bracket top left which is this one here and select and now we want to the backboard top left so that's backboard top left select this one and we want to pin them not link pin so basically pin fix the u1 u2 u3 and allows for rotational degrees of freedom so that's how it acts again so probably you can like save time if i go to this and just copy and let's go to top right and now i need to edit so to, to edit it so let's choose a control point as the bracket top right now so that's a bracket top right which is this one here select pin right and edit again for the so the, for this one backboard top uh, top right it's it's not it's not a lot faster so and the, the, we, we created the first connection here so let's create <coughs> backboard bracket bottom left so bracket bottom left select oops it's it's not copying oh okay and so that i want to bracket bottom left with the backboard bottom left which is this one here and pin right and then create now backward bracket right all right and let's select them with now it's, i believe it's, it's the last one so backboard <clears throat> bracket bottom right okay and now backboard bottom right right and now it's uh, it's spin connect so now we created four four points here and four points uh, four points there and we created a surface for the post and we believe we're good to go now so at this point now it's 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 good to maybe to 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 pause and have a break but yeah but at, at this point it's good to save that's important and uh, to to go to the model here and and copy it because now we created the model we'll be using same model for the for the second analysis which at this point we, we did the most of the work but uh, which is creating the model and assigning the uh, the interaction but now let's let's go to here and let's uh, let's copy the model here if we copy the model we copy everything here so let's copy the model and let's let's call it model analysis no damping <clears throat> right. so now we can uh, we can go to create a step we start with that with the direct uh, implicit which is with the with, with the implicit so let's go to here and uh, let's create <clears throat> at the beginning we we will basically create a static step in which 
we that static step will resemble the the loading so i'll call it the the loading in the time domain and that's i can also add initial condition so let's click okay and uh, we, we we do not have to change anything here basically that's a steady state and static step and so the second step here we are doing the implicit step which is here it's kind of the unloading step we are, we are at that point we we added the load and the dynamic step is remove that load and see the response of the system so unloading and I'll call it again in the uh, time and that's a t for time here and the step is dynamic implicit here so here just choose dynamic implicit and click ok and now here in the step to ask you about the time the length of the process and here I'll, I'll i'll choose it to be for example 10 seconds here and i'll choose fixed step so i want to move at fixed time increments here and i'll have a time increment of 0. <clears throat> 0. Point, for example 0. 0.5 and it, here just to make sure let's have this one as 500 if you have an issue later you, using your solution you can use a, a point one possibly and that one should work so let's click okay now and let's uh, Let's see if I can like create. A, I want to create a set and output sets here, and they want to choose a point on the on the hoop here. So let's uh, mm -hmm. uh, rim. 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 rim reference point. And probably let, let's let's have it here at least for now. So okay. So basically, I want I want to use this one later to plot to plot the data and see see the results. Uh, all right. So let's let's go to output now, and in the output, let's go to manager here. And let's let's edit this one here, the one I really have. And in the output, what they want to out, what they want. So in this problem, I I don't want the strings at least for now, and I do not want the contacts. I uh, I want the displacements, and they want the stresses probably the from my misses stresses as well, and they want the uh, the the node of forces. So let's go to here. And let's go to, I won't have reactions here, but we are no concentrations. But the nodal forces, if you scroll down here, you see nodal force due to element stresses. Click on this one, and I want this one here. And probably, no, let me see if I can have the moments as well. Oh, let's see, probably this one here. So let's let's click OK, and that's the output. And then I want I want the history output here. So the history at at specific nodes. So let's let's go to this and create, and they want it at at the unloading step. And let's let's call it. <laughs> I want let's let's get the results at the at the rim here, the point rim reference, not reference point. Click on this when they want set. I want to now to find the point that is a rim reference point here. 
and let's let's get the stresses here and but possibly I do not need all the stresses so we do not need these so now and they want the displacements and I want to get the reaction forces or not the nodal forces I mean so if we go down and nodal force here and I believe that's that's it. So let's click OK. And <clears throat> let's see if I can I also output one more. So that's at, uh, at, the, at the point where we have the, the support. So let's, let's see bracket <clears throat> top left. <clears throat> let's go to set let's go to bracket top left and they want to output every one increment and let's see this one this and again i do not want these here displacement to be good if I can get the reaction forces. Not the reaction, but I mean all the forces. So and um, let's, let's go to we're we're done with the interaction step. Let's go to the load now. For the load, the boundary conditions that we have, we have we had the the point here is fixed here at the end of the of the post and the load so that's that's it and the boundary conditions here we want to apply it that at the initial condition we wanted to, to propagate so i don't want to worry about it and i don't have this one so i just want to fix that point and this one here that's fixed and you can see here I created the initial step and it will be propagated to the next steps. And for the load now, that, that's that, that's the point. So at the, at the load, the load is applied at the loading condition, the static condition. Uh, let me call it loading here. And for this case, I have concentrated load. If I click on this, and that concentrated load, actually, I wanted this point, so I need to to divide that point here. I can do it here. So if you click on this, create partition and edge, uh, I need to create a data plane. So let's let's go back to here. That's that's uh, that would be really fast. So let's go to rim and at rim we uh, <clears throat> we want to create a. One, one split it, so possibly I can just uh, let's, let's call it by, by location here. Uh, let's create a, a, a reference, a reference uh, plane that, that's easier. So if I could choose this one here, and have the x y x y no that was the wrong one so let me just just a second If you go to here, I just want to delete this one here and want to create one at the uh, YZ. So that YZ and at zero, zero, this one here. And then let's, uh, let's divide it and let's use the days and datum plane. And if I chose this one here and click on this. 
and I'll be able to divide it. And I hope that this is the So sorry, the, the, the axis should be actually on the XZ plane, not YZ plane. So just here, go to again. Uh, so let's go to this one here and I want to again to divide it. And just do this and let's, let's do, let's go back. I just want to choose this only these two. Yes, I want to divide only these and click on this. And now, and now one more thing that I, I realized that you that the steps that we actually created, we created on the on the model analysis system that we plan to do. So we we just start we just make sure that you switch to this one here <clears throat> so that is, we, we're working on the right model, the time integration model. So click on this and let's, let's, let's just go back here and create again the, the, the step. So that's again the loading step. And that's a static. <clears throat> We nothing here. Uh, just rename it. <clears throat> Loading time. We show. And okay. And this is the unloading at the time and dynamic implicit. And that should 10 seconds and fix the steps. That's it's zero five and that's <clears throat> 200 and that's okay. And the history output. So Again, repeat same process. I just pause just to save time and you can do whatever I did before. So I, I just created the outputs and I added this point here as well as a reference point. And then now I just want to go to the loads and in the load here, we, we apply the load in the loading here as an initial condition let me call it the loading and based on our problem we have a load that's applied here and that load is a negative 100 and you can see this is a vertical load in case that you wanted to apply a, a load that's acted at, at an angle what you basically want is to de decompose it based on the angle and add the components for that load here and that would be equivalent to an, an, uh, a load acted at an angle. So now here, it's important to, to notice one thing that once you created that step, which is, let me, let me expand this here. Oops. So, so you can see here what we see in the top. These are the steps that we have. So that's the loading step we, we have and we, where we created the load. And here it says that the load is propagated, but we do not want that. The second step, the unloading, we want to remove the load. And that, that, uh, that remove, we want it solid. So we want it from negative 100 to zero right away. So to do so, or to have that effect, you need just to click on this and just to click deactivate here. So now, the load will be active in the first step. In the second step, it's not active. So that, that's important. All right, so we have this. And uh, we apply the load. And we can proceed to the mesh now. So that's good. So let's go to assign mesh control. And let's hope that my 
the, the division that I did will work and will have them all structured mesh. And that's uh, that's not the case. And you can tell why, because here, this is step, this one is not, it, it's not divided. So we, uh, we can we, we can do it right now here so let's let, let's hide one thing here so let's, let's hide this one as well so if we, uh, we focus here let's, let's zoom in and uh, let's uh, Let's go to here and let's select instances which are apps now and do. Let's. So here just to, to, to divide the structure, maybe one of the best way to do it is to just to click on this here and create just a, a plane. And since I'm, I'm, I'm very close to the, um, I'm, I'm drawing at the center point. So if I play, create a, a plane on the YZ plane and I just click onto a negative five here and make it like this and, and another plane and it's at positive five. Oops, no, not this one here. Let's delete this one. And uh, a plane, which is yeah, this plane at YZ and at positive five. And then I just go to here using a divide face using data plane and just choose just these two. You do not you do not need to divide all of them. It's so that would look messy. So just divide these two and do the same thing for this one here and click on this. And now if you go to here, control and click on this, possibly we, and go to here, we can have structured mesh and that's nice. All right. If this free mesh that, uh, that that's sometimes that creates issues with the, with the solution. And let's have everything here. And let's, let's create the, uh, so for this one here, let's let's have an element size in the in the ring of 0.5. And on the plate, let's have an element size of one. And on the bracket, let's have an element size of 0.5. And on the post, let's have a, an approximate element size of one again. Now let's mesh everything. Right. Nice. So, and you can see here. So the beam is by default now it's it's beam element it's set to beam element, and the uh, we we using shell element here, and it, it, it's used probably we do not need to do this integration here so so uh, and now <clears throat> we can run it so let's go here. And let's go to let's create a job and let's let's call it time it's, and the model is this one choose and uh, okay and submit. Uh, meanwhile, we can go to, to to the other model and try, try start working on it. So let's let's go back here. So I change the model from the top here. 
on this option here and it started working. So, so now this is, this is the model and I just need to, to, to fix these. So we do not actually need these. I created them by, we want this model analysis. So we do not need these steps. So let's, let's delete these steps here. And now let's create in the model analysis. Let me, let me just remind you in the model analysis, we, we, ha we have three main steps, model analysis step, static step and model dynamic step. So the first one is model analysis. Let me call it here model. And we we want to go to here linear perturbation and go to frequency and select the frequency and click OK. And within the frequency here, it's actually that the number of modes or the eigenvalues is as it's an eigen eigenvalue problem now. So let's say that we want to select we wanted to find the the first thirty modes. So there. I think uh, theoretically there are infinite number of modes, but possibly 30 is more than enough than what we want for this for the structure. So let's uh, let's click OK now here, and then want to want to create the the um, the loading here. I'll call it in the frequency domain here, and that step is. In the linear perturbation, and that should be static, just like here, static linear perturbation, and click OK. On this step, we do not need to do anything, just to click OK. And then go to create again. And now we will do the, 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 I'll call it the unloading, just to, to, to do something that's similar to what's in the frequency domain. And now we choose, if you go down here, uh, oh, not down. But here, model dynamics. This one here, and let's create. Let's choose this one. And this one here, we let let's have just like what we had before: ten seconds and zero point zero five. And here we can see we we can use the the, the modes. Let's use the mode. The results from the first mode up to the results. We can use, for example, up to twenty. Well, we can go up to up to thirty, but. Here we let's use the up to 30. And for the first one, we 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 use no damping here. And let's click OK. And, uh, and then let's go to uh, let's go to create the uh, <clears throat> yeah, the output. But before that, let's let's just create. And we can call it trim reference point. And I want to select this point here. Uh, let's go to output now. And in the output, we go to manager. And here you can see here we for each we have output and basically mean output that we want in the uh, in the unloading step. And in the unloading step, so so this, I want this one to be for every increment. And uh, here, we want the, st the stresses, displacement, basically want the displacement. Oh, I don't want the strings now. So want displacement. Uh, OK, let's, let's have these. And for the forces, I want the node of forces. They think that's that's it. So let's let's go click OK. And we want now the history output. So for the history output, we uh, let's see here. So that's let me let me just first rename this one here and just recall it. Uh, rim reference front, <clears throat> and they want to copy it. Let's copy this one uh, because one 
use it same name, but just and it's unloading step. Let's for the front. Let's go to here. Let's go to set. Uh, let's go to rim reference point. Rim. It should it should be the. It should say front, I believe. And right edge and left edge. Oh, it seems that no. So that one. Let me make sure that where I believe I, I created that, that that one. So let me go to to sets and see. So that should be in the assembly sets. Oh, it seems that no, I didn't create that one. So if, if you double click on that, so that's in reference. Oops. Oh, it's, it's already there. So let's 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 see it then. Okay, so this one should be one, and this one. Okay, my bad. So energy and one just one displacement and even the rotations I uh, let, let's give the rotations for now. So This one here, okay. One set reference point, no energy, just want the versus and displacements and. See how we and let's have a point on the on the bracket as well. So that's top left set bracket top left. This one that's one. And now we want want the stresses. And let's have the one misses. And, uh, <clears throat> and they want displacements and uh, reaction for, uh, not reaction, but not the forces. Not the forces, not the forces. All right, I hope we, 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 we're almost close to the end and I'm tired too. So let's, 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 let's finish here. So load, we, uh, we, we're done with the step. We, we're done with the interaction. We are done with the load. Uh, no, load now. So for the load here, we need to apply a load. Let's call it loading. And here loading is in the on this step here, the, this loading step. And uh, we, sh we should apply it here again. And that's zero, negative 100, zero. All right. And here you can see here, you do not need to deactivate it in the in the in the model analysis. It, it, it just created at one step, and 
there is nothing with the next step. Now we need bounded conditions. Let's let's apply them on the initial condition here. And now we already have the bounded condition, so I need no need to change it. So we have we have that one, and for that one, it's fine. Just keep it. So let's uh, let's go to the mesh then. <clears throat> Do this. If you want, you can do what, what we did last time, and I'll pause the video and uh, I'll, I'll divide the structure. You can do it. Even. So now you can see that it's structured mix, and let's uh, let's choose just the number of elements for, for this one here. For this one, let's let's have it as 0.5. So if, if this problem, if, you, if if we design or model this problem as a solid structure, and was a 3D rather than using um, beam and shell, it would be very complex and it takes a lot a lot of time in, in into running. But now it's it's a bit better. So let's let's choose now for this one here. That's one. And this one. Okay, point five. And this one. One. And let's let's mesh everything now. And oops, we, we got an error here. Let's let's see what what's the issue. And, uh, okay, just a second. So uh, I, I, I just went back to check what was the error. And uh, when I check the, the, the message file, it seems that it, it's, it was saying that there was a singular, singularity in the solution. And Part to, usually when you have a singularity of the solution, it means that one if the part is not fixed well or there's an issue with the bounded condition. So when I went back to to wait to 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 the time integration method, let's make sure that we we, we apply the the boundary conditions here. So in in the yeah, in this model, just make sure you apply the boundary conditions. And when you apply it in the time domain, just make sure you click this one here as well. You activate the the, uh, the load in the uh, in the second step, time step. So just make sure that you you apply this, and that that's an important step. So uh, that's for the time integration method. For the for the model analysis. There's an important step as well that we missed, and that's uh, that, it's an easy one. But so once we went to the model analysis, we have to tell the software that include the initial condition. So in this step, in the unloading, just make sure that you choose this one here. You choose use initial conditions, and uh, uh, and click OK. So. Yes, and now we let's let's go to run and see. One of the main differences between the the time integration methods that for linearly or semi or like mid, mid nonlinear problems, the uh, both would give quite a close results, but with the model analysis will give you results that are very fast in comparison with the time integration method because that requires inversion of the solution. <clears throat> so as this one is running, I, I will create another model. 
and I'll copy and include the, the damping effect here. So if I go to back to here and just copy this one here, the model analysis no damping, just copy this one, right to click and copy this one. And let me erase this one and we can call it with damping. For, for this one here, just make sure that you're, you're working with the, with, the, with the right one. Let's go to the step. And within the step here, go to this one here, edit, and go to, tam go to damping, sorry. And within damping step, let's add a 5%, which is 0.05% damping. And let's click. Okay. <clears throat> and probably it's fair when you do it, when you solve your the problem yourself. Uh, probably it's it's fair to have the time step as 0.1 or maybe some a, a bit larger because that uh, uh, 0 0.05 might be a bit slow and uh, uh, working remotely may, might be an issue for you. So as it's running, I, I can create the, the damping one. So this is the model with dampings. I'm probably doing this, the, 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 uh, the, the new run will finish before the time integration method. So damping this one here, all right, okay, and submit. So you can see, you can see that it, it takes a lot of step. And probably if I can plot, have this one here on the side. Once it's done, what we want to do, we want to compare and do some analysis. And then we hopefully will be done. If things are right. So the one here on the left is the, is the model analysis. And you can see how fast it is compared to that one. See, the time integration now is, is dying and trying just to, 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 to move one, one step at a time, while the model analysis is very fast and rapid. And it's done. It's, it's very fast. So I'll pause a bit and wait for the other one. So basically what we did so far is we, we run the model, we did the model for the time integration and, and we run it. And for the time integration, I just wanna re, uh, reinforce that, just make sure that you have the, you, you have the, the, the boundary conditions that's fixed all the time from the initial condition till all the time. But for the load, just apply it first step and then deactivate it for the second step. For the damping and no damping, uh, this, which is the model analysis, these two, just make sure that you include the initial conditions for these two. And uh, now let's start to compare the results. So let's, uh, let's, let's have the results for the time integration. And what we want to do, we'll have them all, we'll plot them all into uh, one page and see see how they look like. So first, let's let's see just how it looks like since it's quite appealing just to see it. See, there's the time integration, and if we if we actually run it, and you can see it it, it vibrates, and th this is how it looks like. And that magnitude, you can see the magnitude of vibration that is shown here, and probably here it's it's a bit magnified, but. Uh, We, if, if you want to reduce the magnification. And once, let's just add one thing here before 
it's quite appealing to do this here. So and it helps to see if it is traces. You can go to view and from view ODB display options and you click on this here and to, to it, it will give you more, more sense of the, uh, uh, of the depth. And if you go to this one here, you can hear this magnified by 72%. That's that's a bit too much. So let's 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 have for example 20. And with this, if you run if you if you, if you run this, you, you can see a bit how yeah how it vibrates. So that, that the first one was a bit misleading because uh, like it, it shows you how, how it vibrates and and this is a bit more uh, it gives it gives a better sense of, of how, how it vibrates and uh, we want to see how what the what the model analysis looks like and compare the results for displacements compare the results for the stresses and then get the design considerations and end this session and i believe that was too long and i'm tired honestly so let's uh Let's let's go to this one here and let's go with no damping first. And let's uh, let's get, get the results here. And because I want to first just to discuss what, what what results that we uh, we expect here. So if we go to back here and take a look at the results that we oops, no, no, not that crazy. Uh, usually, with the model analysis, the first step that that we find the model model uh, the the mode shapes, uh, which is uh, which is what what's happening here. For example, this is the first mode, this is the second mode, third mode, and the more it gets, the more crazy it gets. But thus, these these are these are the natural mode shape. These are the natural mode shape of that, of that structure. Yeah, you can see it, it gets funny, but yeah, th that comes out of the math. So it, it finds these and it, it gets some model displacement and then it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it uses to solve the next step, which is now this one here, which in this step we apply the load and after the load we're unloading. And now we see the step and this step now should look like quite similar to what we saw before. And you can see here, Um, let's make it a little faster. I can go into here and move it a bit faster like this. Oops, no. And what we want to do, we want to plot them all at the same time and see. So the, the way to do it is uh, create a window here. If you go to here, create window one and two, and then just click, click on this. And now we can see the results of, uh, of, uh, of all of them. And let's make sure that the first one, I want to have the time integration, just to click on this here on the top. And I want to have this one here as the time integration. The second one, I want it to be with no damping here. Let's, let's make sure that it's okay. It's highlighted. And for the third one, I want it to be with damping. And now uh, let's, let's make sure that I compare. And I, I can click on this as well. Link the views. If you go to this, link the views, and we can. Uh, let me if, you, if I do this now I can if I go to displacement I can see the displacement for all of them and now you can see here for the for the case with the for so ideally what we what we want to be to do if we have the time integration and model analysis if they both are are, are very similar then that that's good and the one on the on the left here, this is time integration, and the one on the right, this is the model analysis. And the model analysis wait, was very fast in calculation and in computation. And look at the results here. This is the maximum semester 2.5, this is 2.3. And the 
the, the minimum value is, is here 1.97 and here's 2.097. So you can see that the results between these two are quite similar. And uh, 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 but the time for computation was was quite different, so that's uh, th that's an important and cr cr crucial step. That if you can go for model analysis and model analysis will gives you results, then probably it's it's a better choice not to choose it. And usually for linear for linear problems and uh, mildly nonlinear problems, then that that one could should work. Th uh, the model analysis probably would work and will give you results that way faster than the nonlinear. And to compare the results better, it's, it's better not, not just to, to, to look at the result this way, but to plot something and see. And that's why I choose the point here in the, middle, in the front so that I can compare the results. And now we want, at the beginning, we, we want to compare the displacements at that, at that point. And to do so, let's go to output here, XY data, field output and uh, our history output and let's go to the, the to output the, the reference so if we go down here i want to see u2 and u2 again is the displacement along y and that's where it's, it vibrates so, so let's go to here and in u2 this is the this is the one this rim reference and no i want the front which is this one here so uh, the rim reference front, and we've plotted. So th this, this is the displacement. So, so this displacement as that one was going up and down, up and down, and that's its displacement. And for the second one, if we go here, and this window will update right away. So go down and want to again plot U2 and uh, U2 front, this one here. and. If I plot it and we'll go to the last one with the damping, I applied 5% damping. And again, I went to it and see, so I go to it and unplot it. At the beginning, let's compare things that are similar, which is with no damping case, which is the time integration and with the model analysis. And if you look at the results here, you can see here the results are very similar. And though there, there's very minor difference, but they're very close to each other. So that's very close to, to what, 0.3 here. And that's the same here. It's, it's a bit smaller, but it's still, it, it follows the same pattern. Yet it, it gives you the result at which, which is way faster than that one with the same time step. And, uh, if we look at the at the one with the with the damping, you can see here the damping here for the first reduced right away here within the, the first few steps, and you can see the the oscillation start to decrease right away. And uh, by by that point, I believe this one is just the move of the of the po of the post or the column rather than just the, the moving or the move of the uh, of the uh, of the rim itself. Uh, we we can also compare what we can compare the uh, we can, can compare stresses as well. So let's uh, let's go to here and uh, let's go to stresses and let's compare stresses here. Probably even this one here. So let's go to stresses and uh, let's have the one meter stress and let, let, let's. Let's see. All right. Move this one here. So for the for the stress values, they're not uh, there. There is a bit of difference between them but the displacements are quite similar and what we want to compare here is the uh, the, the, the nodal forces as well so let's see if i can get the nodal forces and the change in the stresses right now honestly i'm not i'm not, I'm not really sure of why, of why that, that changes
All right. So at least in, in terms of nodal forces. So for the nodal forces for the design consideration, what I want that is is the following. The point here that what we had here, we uh, this is where we applied the, the pin connection. And this pin connection resembles a bolt here. And but this is a quite rough uh, preliminary design consideration, but we want to see if we, if, we, if, we, if we were to put a bolt here, how much load would that would be applied to it dynamically. So having said that, what we can do is if we go to uh, this one here and start to hide Let's, let's cut this one here and have only two window. So let's work with this. So let's see. Sections. Oops, I need to highlight this window. So I want this is highlighted. No sections. Okay, perfect. So I can hide this one and I can hide this one and I can hide this one. And let me do the same here. And I want to see, I want to see it from the back. And it's, it's, this one here, let's, let's stop the link because it seems that they're not. So, So here, in terms of the nodal forces, they well, their values are quite, quite double here. And honestly, I'm not sure why, but I'll, I'll depend on the this time displacement. But the 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 idea here is, and I expected that for them uh, to be exactly the same here. the the forces here that we, what we want here the displacement the the nodal forces so we, i selected here in force three and in force two and for in force two is just a force it, it's just a force along the, the the y direction which is shear force for a bolt probably within that load what we'll have is in in uh, in force three which is force along the z direction out of a plane displacement as, which uh, which will be the axial load on a bolt. And so you can see here, these are the points in which we applied the, <clears throat> the displacements. I mean, we applied the, the pin load. And if we, if we were to apply to design a pin for this dynamic problem, we will basically choose this point and see the load on, on, this, uh, on, on these points here. So let's go to, to here. And what I want here now is to, to plot this, to see the maximum stress on these, on these areas and then our maximum nodal, uh, let's see, nodal, nodal, nodal forces and the plot it here. So I want to take this one here edit selection now oh, i have i have that one selected so let's, let's choose that one then first so and plot and then go to this window that selection and plot 
Oops. Well, when you plot them, they're not too far. Probably it, it, it just has somewhere, something at the time. Oh, I see. So the results are quite similar. They're not far, as I said. Uh, uh, but it, it just that the, the issue is that the, the time step that we're comparing at, they're not exactly the same. So if you look here at the, at the last step here, so you can see this step is a bit down here up to 60. And this system is, is a bit higher, but overall the profile is is pretty much similar. So I take it back. These, those results are actually very similar, except for the fact that that you need to make sure that you're comparing at the right time. And uh, you can you can see here the behavior is is very similar for for both solutions. So. So again, uh, my, my, my main point of, of the year is to look at the maximum load during dynamic analysis problem and how much that load would be. And then try to design. So for example, if we want to design a load, a, a bolt at that point, we'll have, the, we, we'll have the axial load, which is around 100 bound for here, which is the nodal force here, which means that if we have a bolt, we'll have this 100 pound force divided by the cross-sectional area of that bolt, and it would be the, st it would be the stresses on that, on that bolt now, which could be quite high, especially for smaller areas. So that's for design consideration. If you, if you were to de de design a bolt, that's what you need to do. And here, you can see, I made a mistake here, and you should kind of have the idea that Comparing right away out of the plots, I mean, out of the, uh, the, uh, the, the this, uh, this uh, not, not sure what to call it, but this is colorful plot here, sometimes can be misleading. It's always better to like select an element or a node and have your plot per time or per, per displacement and see how, how it actually looks like. Uh, so that, that way it makes more sense. Um, and I believe if we if we were to plot the the the, the damped one, we'll see a clear decrease in the uh, in these values. So let, let's compare the damped with the undamped. So if we go to here, and let's hide this one. Let's hide this one, and let's. Go to here and let's have the nodal forces free. And let us then selection. Right. Let's select this point and plot. You can see here for the damp case, actually there's a huge decrease. So that 5% that they added, it's, it's, it's a huge value that within, within even four or five seconds that the amplitude dropped significantly. So, so you, you can see now the effect of the damping and probably depending on that, uh, on, on that um, simulation may not be that, uh, that efficient here. So, uh, let, let me see. Oops. Oops. See, this can be misleading. You, you see this, and you think that it's moving a lot. But even there, you can tell that, OK, it's kind of like stabilized. Even in here, you can, OK. But within the plot, it's 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 way way more clear that it's uh, it's uh, it's 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 diminishing due to the damping effect. Well, one more thing that we can uh, we can take a look at is let me. So. So that we have the 
you know the 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 moments as well but the things that possibly when you do your project you may be asked to size that beam or size the the uh, the, the bolt or so and within that step when you when you when you do it you you need to add with the the moments here and I, I I only add with the the, the nodal forces, but probably you need to add with the moments, and you can see the the moments or the stresses that are developed on this on this column, and and see how how you how you can uh, like design it, or you can you can just take this you can take also the stresses. So let's see, wait, we can we can get sigma one one here, and. Uh, Sigma. <laughs> we go to we close this one and this one. We go to path, and within path here we. Uh, Have this one. Try to select point here. Let us try to hide one of them. Oh, that's that's nothing. But what we can do is go to integration points. Go to fan muses traces S11 and we we plot them. Let me go to here. Select an element here. And okay. And then plot. And within the plot here, we can see we, we can try to select the maximum the maximum stresses and based on this maximum stress or then probably later even maximum moments try to size it. And the way to size the, these things that once you get your nodal forces or no, or or moments is to go back to what I have here in the slide. It's not complete, but it is a story. If we go back to here. And uh, basically, if you if you if you have if you, if you have the stress uh, that that's acting on here, what you need to do you have you have the stress you have the moments, and basically the the the, the stress sigma one one will, will be M C over I in which I for 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 the pipe for example is just this divided by this formula. So if you if you have the moment, the maximum moment. And for for the maximum moment, and uh, you have you have the stress, you can basically design for this and find this uh, d d o and d d i, which is the would be the th thickness and the d o and the diameter of that of that pipe, so that your your stress does not exceed certain value. Uh, again, uh, now I'll try just to summarize. That was very long, uh, like tutorial. Uh, we basically try to simulate this one here, the the effect of the the the, the, the dynamic response of uh, a basketball post as as uh, as it dunk or as we have a force and uh, and remove that force. We did it using two ways: this time domain and. Uh, and the frequency domain, we saw that these results are actually the same. At the beginning, I said I, I, I thought that they're not the same, but uh, again, the, these results are the same. Just make sure that you plot them uh, to, to compare the results. For linear problems, where possibly this result will be very similar. So it would be wise to use model analysis for mostly linear problems. Uh, we model the structures, we divided the geometry. And to, to do so, we we applied the, we applied coupling between the between the bracket and the and the backboard. We we applied pin uh, using MCP constraint 
and we use the, the pin constraint to, to connect the now to, to connect the bracket to the backboard but the the ring were, were, were coupled using kinematic coupling to the to the bracket we with this i end up this presentation i hope that you enjoyed it and thank you very much <laughs>